Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, we want to continue our discussion today on GIMP. And somebody asked, uh, first comment, hey, I said, leave comments down there in the video to say what you'd like me to cover next, because I would do something like, you know, how to use this tool, that tool, whatever else. But somebody's like, how do you do plugins in GIMP? I'm like, you know, I've actually not done plugins in GIMP, so let me go ahead and research this. Well, uh, after pulling out all my hair, I come to this final conclusion. Just don't. Just don't. No. <laughs> Kemp itself is very good. There's uh, there's very few plugins. Looking around at all the different plugin options that you have available, there's uh, there's very few things that I would say. Now the next reason is there used to be a time when GIMP plugins was a huge deal, but a lot of people have kind of abandoned them. I had to dig around for a long time to find anything that I could use without compiling. I failed. So we actually have to compile a plugin on Linux. Now, if you're using Windows or Mac, then you will have a little bit better of a time because there are actually Mac and Windows plugins that are still actually developed and have very simple download, click, install. But for Linux, <laughs> I hope that you like using the make command. Uh, but we are still, nevertheless, going to show you how that works. Now, the first thing you need to know is if you have a plugin file, let's just start with the very beginning basics and say, okay, I have downloaded a plugin file. What do I do with it? Well, what you're going to do is you're going to go over to GIMP. And you need to know where to put it. Now, if you head on down to your preferences and inside of your GIMP preferences, we will have a spot down here called folders. Expand this out and you can see these are the various folders where things are going. Here's your temp folders, your swap folders. If you have brushes you've downloaded or created, you can drop them. And what you'll notice is that there's a couple different folders listed on all these guys. Here's one for plugins. The top one is to use your local user. The bottom one is system wide. Now, when I installed the plugin that uh, I will show you how I uh, how to make and compile a plugin, I installed it globally because this computer has four different user accounts. And hey, if I'm going to go through the hassle of adding a plugin, I'm just going to go ahead and install it for all users. So I don't have to worry about it. But if you're doing something, either uh, you, you're concerned about something overwriting that file later, or if you only have a single user account, definitely just put it in your home folder. So this is home. This is my username. And it goes in for linux.config slash gimp slash 2.10 slash plugins. Now, the reason I'm going to show you this folders instead of just telling you that is if you are on Windows or Mac, finding this folder is the same preference, uh, the same place. And there are still two because Windows has a global place to put the plugins for all users and it has a local place for just your user. And so we have to recognize that and Mac will do the same thing. So since I don't do a lot with Windows or Mac and since usually plugins with GIMP are as easy as downloading the um, the installer for the plugin, then you don't probably don't need to know that as much. But if you're downloading some raw file, you are going to need to know how to get here. Now, what I end up doing is I went online and I had consulted a number of different places to say, okay, well, I have not done, um, I have not done any, uh, plugin work in the past, mostly for me. I just think GIMP is good as it is. The one feature that I liked in Photoshop that's not in GIMP really well anyway is, uh, the batch processor. I've gotten used to doing it with the terminal and image magic, and I think it works a whole lot better anyway. But nevertheless, that did end up being the one plugin I could find. Now I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a uh, a little bit of a challenge here and show you why this is so problematic. You know what? Let's go ahead and use a different window for this. Let's go here instead. There, it looks a little bit better. So this is from ShotKit. There's a couple of different places where you can find these guys. And when you come on down here, um, this is just where GIMP plugins found, just walking you through it. Here's your Mac, your Windows, your Linux. So this is kind of where you are. But again, just using the folders inside the preferences is the best way to do that because it it's going to tell you exactly where it is without all of the uh, dollar sign home. What does that mean? Uh, just means your home directory. But nevertheless, um, uh, that is a good universal place to go. 
Now there's the automatic method. Um, so Windows and Mac, usually they say this, right? Windows user and Mac, they'll all be packaged nicely. Here's your DMG. Linux is like, <laughs> now there's a little caveat to this. The few plugins I found that are still being developed, they now have automatic installs through flat packs. If you want to use flat packs, you can install GIMP with a flat pack, install the plugin with a flat pack, and in theory, they'll work together. I don't use flat packs unless I absolutely have to, so that really wasn't an option for me. But just understand that is an option for you. Now, what you're actually going to have to do is compile them, and we'll walk through how to do that here in just a moment. So over here, um, they're listing them, Darktable. Now, Darktable uh, and Raw Therapy, these are FOSS applications. They're going to uh, manipulate raw camera files. Very good to use, very good to have if you're doing raw photography and things like that. And they do have options for plugins. However, when you're going to the pages to find any information on plugins is extraordinarily difficult. So despite you'll find these in the plugin lists, I didn't find where the actual plugins are. This one, I think, is one of the ones where they had... No, I think this is the one that is um, you couldn't find what you were looking for. Or was this the one that was... Uh, yeah, this one here, all of these uh, repositories were down. So I try and access these, and they're all broken. Oh, well. So broken links, common thing. Resynthesizer, this one looked interesting. Basically, it gives you some extra uh, clone tools and stuff. And here you had, this is, hey, you can install the Flatpak version for Linux, or you can do the Windows or the Mac, or you can build it from source. And that's what you're going to find more often than not. Wavelet, Hugin, uh, duplicate to another image. This one seems to have gone 404 Um I didn't look into that one. Uh, and then I, the one that I'm doing is the batch image manipulation plugin. This one here, hey, I might actually use it, but I might just stick with my Image Magic strip scripts because I think it's probably going to work a little bit better anyway. But this guy here, you can see we have a down, we have an installer for Windows, and that's about it. Let's go ahead and open this page up. And so the reason I'm telling you all this is don't think that, oh, we're just going to find some plugins and install it in GIMP and GIMP's going to become big and amazing and awesome. No, actually what's going to happen is um, you're going to get frustrated if you're on Linux. If you're on Mac or Windows, you'll be fine. So here we go. We can download the installer for Windows. We can grab the installer for Mac and we can download the sources. So this is actually what I did. So I went ahead and just downloaded the sources. So I just kind of dropped those on my desktop and here is the plugin for it right here. Let me make that bigger for you. And so what you have here is just the information and then down here under the readme file, open this guy up here and then it has the um, uh, the top one, I think, where's it at? Just the top little bits, Windows. There you go. Here's Windows. Hey, download the thing, click the button. Yay! Mac. Uh, where's the Mac at? Mac. Download it. Click the file. Yay! Linux. Yeah, you guys get to build some stuff. So um, on Linux, not, not complicated. You need to install the uh, GIMP tool. So we have uh, these two applications for Debian-based. So since I'm on Linux Mint, and then you have for Fedora, GIMP Dev Tools, and then look these up for whatever your distribution is if it's neither of these. And then you're going to go into the folder and do make and install or make and sudo make install dash admin. I did the second option because what this does is this is going to drop this inside of the plugins folder for the whole um the basically the the whole system so this is going to drop the plugins in usr lib gimp 20 dash plugins so it's going to add basically all of the uh different plugins in here now of course that is installing it globally if i were to be installing this on uh just my individual user i'm going to want to show my hidden folders go into dot config and then you're going to go into GIMP 2.10, 
and plugins, and then you will drop it here. Now, this is where I was attempting to install some other plugins. They didn't work. So we're just going to go ahead and delete those ones there. All right. So basically, it was just a simple task. Um, this really, the it actually took longer to install the GIMP tools than it did to do the, uh, do the make. So here I did the make. And then once that is done, you need to restart GIMP. If uh, GIMP's been running, go ahead and restart it. And then this particular application is under File, Batch Image Manipulation. So now I have the ability to add a bunch of images and make some adjustments. So that is the complicated part about putting together um, plugins for uh, for GIMP. So if you're on Windows or Mac, you're going to be doing a little bit easier job. Even still, though, you're going to find a lot of plugins just aren't being developed anymore. Some of them are 404. Some of them are only compatible up to 2.8. Some of them just haven't been updated in a good several years. So as far as plugins, uh, this is how to install it on Linux. You're probably going to end up making it or you have to find the file and drop it into the appropriate folder. Windows or Mac, a little bit easier. You're just going to have to download the installer and click on that, and that should work well for you. But all of that being said, as far as I'm concerned, I like GIMP the way it is. I'm not going to bother with plugins as much, but hopefully this will help you to get plugins installed. Don't be afraid of that make command. Uh, they're going to have a readme in there to show you exactly what to do and how to do it. And uh, with that, even if worst case, you just make the file and have to move the final output, that's fine too. So hopefully this helps. Let me know in the comments down below what else you would like to see on GIMP. If not, then I will just proceed on with some, some more basics and as the weeks go on. So thanks for watching, guys, and hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.